Hello, kittens. Let's try that again. Hello, kittens. Welcome to Sid the Cat. I've been looking forward to this stream all day. So, for the last couple of days, we've been working on a new split screen multiplayer game um, that's actually kind of designed for mobile. So, it's got really simple graphics. It's sort of a mix between Mario Kart and Towerfall. If you've ever played those two games. So, it's all about uh, crazy, in the moment, multiplayer action, split second decisions, and using strategic uh, uh, uses of weapons to get the upper hand over your opponent. Uh, lots of quick rounds, you know, like just one more go, just one more go. Uh, I don't expect the rounds of this game to last more than 30 seconds. So nice and quick. Perfect for if you're on the tube or on a bus and you just want to play a quick game with a friend. So that's what we're doing today. Uh, the focus right now is actually just implementing the different power-ups. So the core gameplay is done and we're just adding a couple of different weapons and things. So let's jump into our game and I'll just run the game as it is. Uh, some of the graphics are temporary, um, some of them aren't but we'll, we'll figure that out later. Uh, and in fact, I might, before I do this, I've actually been, <laughs> I've been hurting my fingers because I've been twisting to try and do the two player controls at once. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add some uh, additional controls here. Uh, okay, so we'll do, um, like, okay, control, and this one can be alt, give me command, okay, and then on the right, uh, player two, we'll do, we'll just do the arrows, I think. Uh, Up, yeah, left, left, okay, cool. Um, you know, while we're here, we may as well implement some um, joy buttons. So on device, um, okay, so player left is just gonna be the D-pad left. Uh, player shoot, it's just gonna be the X button, uh, where is it? Cross button. Okay, the player right is going to be the D pad right button. And for player two, we do the same thing, but we just set the device as device one. And we will say uh, that the right key is D pad right. The shoot key is cross, yep, cool, and the left key is d-pad left, and uh, we'll figure out the rest later, okay, so that's going to make it a little easier to test the game, I don't have to spin my arm around on the side, okay. <clears throat> so you may have noticed uh, since yesterday we've made the controls a little bit bigger uh, and that is because I tested it on my mobile phone and the buttons just weren't quite big enough. Okay, so let's have a little go. I'm going to try and... Whoa, something happened. Oh, I see. I'm triggering my OS uh, commands. <laughs> Okay, so I, can, I can't play both players at once, but this is going to make it still uh, easier to test. Okay, so if I push the I button, I've got a debug um, sort of cheat in here, so I can load the ice. Uh, so I was working on this recently, so if we power up the ice, we can... Okay, so the release of that button is not quite triggering. What about for this player? 
Okay, so if we want to shoot and let go, okay, that's not triggering either. Okay, I know why that is. I think. Uh, if we push the button, no, that that does still shoot. Okay. Uh, so I think it's because we changed the way the player's controls work for the mobile to work. Um, so it's this thing here, on shoot button up. But I'm very confused uh, why it, that works. So the touch button's working. So the touch button's on the side, right? Um, but when I let go of the key, it's not shooting. Uh, it's this here. Um, so let's just uh, print event dot type. I think we can say. Nope. Uh, is it class? Get class. Okay, so we we got mouse motion. Okay, input event key. Input event key. All right, so that's not actually input event action. It's an input event key. All right, so that's gonna fix that uh, shoot value. Okay, cool. So now uh, we can now load push the I key to cheat and load the ice into our ammunition and we can now shoot the ice smack. Uh, so right now the ice doesn't really do much. Um, we want it to freeze obviously whoever goes into it and the missile if I push M I can load that into my ammunition and the missile uh, is designed to sort of like bounce around so you can actually get power-ups with the missile if you're um and <laughs> and then once the missile bangs into something uh three times it explodes but i want to make it so that when it bangs into the player uh it's going to explode immediately so we're going to implement that uh so let's just see how that's working at the moment Uh, so if we load up a missile and we let go, we can see that we got a, a collision with a rigid body 2D of a 2682. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, Godot's uh, group system to detect players, essentially. So what I'm going to do is jump in here to the player scene uh, and I'm just going to go over here and make sure that we select player and it's going to add this to the players group right and save cool now we go into the missile code and <clears throat> every time we collide uh, with something, so like when you shoot the missile, um, it, it can't collide with you uh, to begin with until it bounces off something else. So that's what this is doing. Um, that we don't need to do anymore. Okay, so say if body dot in group is in group and we'll put a uh, players group and 
implement that constant top. So uh, that will go up here. Const players group is equal to the string players. Let's go back down to the bottom. Okay. So if the body is in the players group, then uh, body um, then we say body dot hit itself and then we will just die and return, I think. Uh, in fact, we don't, yeah, we might as well return. Okay, so we'll just immediately explode. And then the, uh, the player just needs to implement a hit function. Uh, okay, so some of the stuff we should be able to extract into a static uh, class. But for now, I think I'm going to just leave it here and then refactor a little bit later. Um, so I think do we, we don't really have a public API for this. So you know what? I'm just going to put this at the top as a public API. And then down the bottom, we'll say this is callbacks. OK. And all of these are actually callbacks of some degree, I believe. Uh, so the propel can be part of the public API. So let's move that up. Okay. And we'll say func hit. And we'll say uh, the hitter is whatever is there, right? So what I'm going to say then, uh, what we might do is we'll match header dot get class, and if it is a uh, missile, I don't really know if this is the best way to do this. In fact, why is this killing my CPU? Oh yeah, it's still running. Um, okay. Do we even have the missile class loaded? Ah, uh, yeah, we do. Okay. In fact, I'm just, I might just print the header dot get class here, and then figure out well where we go from there. Uh, in fact, it's probably better to just break point here and have a look around. Oh yeah, no, no, no chill hop, no chill beats. Okay, so let's load up our missile. Let's zoom along. And let's make sure we can shoot the other player with our missile. Let's get quite close. <laughs> My aim isn't that good yet. Smack. Boosh. Okay, so we got our break point. Uh, so the header is this object here, which has already been freed, it looks like from oh, one moment 